How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. And welcome back to the original team. It's been a little while, people, but we're back and we're here to discuss another win, another three points. And an interesting one, well, interesting three points because we got it right in the right in the death with a Declan Rice winner. And we're going to discuss it all, people. Lee, James in the building as always, and Jordan back in sunny surroundings. It's minus something around where I am now, but Jordan seems to be enjoying it. Some nice weather. Where, where are you, Jordan? Well, you're on mute, but let me unmute you because it has been a little while. So, no, no, I've done it. I've done it. Go on. All right. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Um, it's 31 here. I'm in Bali and it's just, I can't stop sweating. I, can't, I literally cannot stop sweating. It's that hot. I've got the aircon on. I've got a fan behind the phone here. It's just ridiculous. But you can see we've got the pool there, got the blue skies in the background of the, the palm trees. It's, we're living good. We're living good, having a very well-earned birthday present to myself and a, and a, and a very well-earned uh, end-of-the-year gift. So, yeah, that, I'm sorry that you can't... Jess, talk. any chance of coming on, please? Sorry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Come back on, please. He's already winding me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely here. It's lovely here. And if you, don't, if you don't mind, Toko, just before we go any further, I've just got a couple of things. Very briefly, I'd like to address, just before we get onto the pod, to discuss what we're going to discuss. So... Right. Oh, wow, wow, already. Just, to, I'll keep it brief. I've got lots of notes, but I'm going to scrap a lot of them. So first of all, I want to just say that um, I, I saw the shows, great shows. Uh, I saw Jess, Jess's contribution. And I want to first off by start off saying that I think Jess was great. I thought she was really good, really insightful, really articulate, you know, really passionate about the Arsenal, loves, loves her team. And I thought she was a great addition. Um, I don't know if, if Cass, who works behind the scenes, trying to tell me something, because he gets a lot of high quality substitutions for me. Jess, Sheroy, Curtis, Dan. Is he trying to say to me that either A, because Jordan's so good, we need to get the best in class to step in for him, or is it the other side where it's like, we need to trial some other people because Jordan's got to go? I don't know. But anyway, Jess was good. She was really, really good. However, there were some points that she made that I'm stunned you guys let fly. No one challenged Jess on anything. No one challenged Jess on any of her opinions. The whole world-class two players, Saka's world-class thing, not a peep. Nonsense. No, no one challenged that. I thought she was spot on. Uh, oh, God. As friends, new Jess friends, friends. Let her say what she wants, friends. Um, <laughs> uh, what, her, what was her, her opinion on how we were playing, I thought was fairly balanced. But a little bit, a little bit more sycophantic than I thought it should have been. No one challenged her on that. And I thought that, and, and I just thought that Lee's Lee's defense of me and my point deduction, which we'll get to now as well, was was really really classy. I think Lee, what you did for me was really really classy. I, I know I know I know who my people are because I thought James and Turkish were my people. Totally stuck me up, but it's fine. I'm, I'm going to win the league. I'm a bit like Pep now. I'm more determined than ever. To win the Premier League and win this win this this table. So it's all good. It's all good. But overall, I thought it was two good shows. I just thought a little bit more, less of a loving, a bit more critical thinking would have done. But overall, well done. Well done. And Jess, well done as well. Thank you. Thank you for stepping in, Jess. It's appreciated. <laughs> this guy started the show with a review of She Knows Arsenal, Jessica Black. Listen, I think Jess done very well over the last couple of shows, if I'm honest. I agree. I agree. So we'll bring her in. <laughs> oh, look at this. It, look at this. Look at this. Let's oh, my up. gosh. What are you saying, Jess? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> All that that you were saying, I hope you'll say it to my face now, because you thought you thought you were going to get away why with did, it. Why did I know Turkey's about to stitch me up? <laughs> <laughs> Hence why I complimented her first. Yeah, I know. Because I thought you might try this. On WhatsApp, he wasn't so complimentary at first, was he? No, he <laughs> certainly <laughs> wasn't, though, you know. I, 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 I didn't hear amazing. anything nice. Felt like she you was were really going in she, on me there. I, I, said she was, I said she was amazing. And what's that? <laughs> what was going on? I've got the receipts. I'm on, a bit, oh, I'm, I'm on the phone right now. I said <laughs> she was amazing on WhatsApp. What's going on? No, you did, Jordan. I'll give you that. You did. I'll give that. Mm. But, but, but then come a big butt. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. 
But just first of all, just, first of all, just thank you for stepping in. I really appreciate it. It was a bit of a madness my end. So coming in last second, it was really appreciated. You saved my butt there, so I appreciate 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 for that. I thought you were great. I thought you were really really good. The comments liked you. The boys liked you. I thought you were a, 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 an adequate oh, standing. Jim. Just friends, 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 friends. I heard yeah. the word sycophantic. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, like what? <laughs> oh, Jordan, are you threatened by my presence? Is that what you hear? Are you threatened by my presence? M m massively, massively. Do people, do massively. people like me? <laughs> no, just joking. M Did you watch massively. the whole game this time, or just watch highlight? What's going wow. on? <laughs> Wow. Wow. Well, well, well. Oh, dear. You better get in that ball because you're sweating even more now, boy. <laughs> I think I am. Put the rag out. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, lo it's, it's, it's lovely to meet you, Jess, anyway. It's, it's nice to, to meet you. We've, we've, you. we've not met before. Yeah, we have. Look forward to some critical thinking and you know, and all and all of that and all of what you've missed over the last couple of shows, Jordan. Um, big up Jess. Right. He's back in the building. We thought it's only right. All five of us entered the fray for this one. We told you it's gonna be Jess. Jordan said he can do it. So we thought, listen, forever arsenal five up, why not hit the like button? To be honest, we should hit the like button right now. Fat one thousand likes, nice and early. There's five of us in the building. Very special show and a very special win to talk about. Big up Jordan back as well. Um, we have we have missed you, Jordan. It's like, well, we, we, we've I missed the, you too. We've loved the comments, you. but we've missed you. I'm sure you've loved the comments. <laughs> you, like, you, you like a bit of abuse in the comment section. I've noticed that about you over the last few years. It is, what it, is. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. And we will get into comments of the day come the end of the show, people. Come the end of the show. So make sure you get your comments in. Ah, right, big win. And I say big win. Not because it was comfortable or there was a big margin between, but it was a big win because it looked like we wasn't going to get the three points. Um, Lee, I'm going to start with you because it must have been crazy there. It oh. must have been crazy. Yeah. Firstly, I was jealous you was there because the, the, the stadium, the old school feel, the, what was it, 1,200, 300 away? Uh, what was it, the ticket-wise? The away fans? Like only 1,000. There's 11,000 in the stadium, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, And i got to say, loved every minute of it. But just give me one second because I've got to change my comments now because Jess is here, like, you know what I mean? So hold on a second. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, uh, what what an atmosphere! Absolutely unbelievable. I, I, I'm going to say it now. Look, I know we're going to be critical of lots of things and everything like that. But if you're going to win a game at the end of it, and it and it was a great game of football, that is how to do it because it was just mayhem in there. Like you know, there was. I haven't been like that for a very very long while. You know. Uh, where I was standing, I went about five seats forward over the people being pushed over and things like it was absolutely crazy. The whole place went mad, and I know people are going to say oh, it's only looting and all that. I don't care, it's a last minute winner when you just think that you've thrown away two points. Uh, it was just mayhem. Um, I, I I don't know where to start, really. Like, you Did know, you see the, the clip do the rounds of the fans falling through no, the you stands, like it. on the winner? <laughs> yeah, everybody just the tried ball, to fall like, down yeah. to the front. The, the thing that was really weird about it, I would say it's probably 30, seat, 30 row, rows of seats. That's all there is, I, I would say. No more than that. So you can imagine you're right close to the players as it is. And then, like everybody, just piled forward. It was just crazy, like you know. I'm pretty sure there was some uh, some injuries after that, but it was just absolute mayhem. Um, I've got to say, you know, you go to the they actually, you know, I, I, I can't explain it. It's like you wouldn't know that there was a there in a waste. It's somebody's house. <laughs> it's somebody's house. It opens up, and it's like you go through into somebody's back garden. It's it's just absolutely incredible, like you know, to, to see it. And uh yeah, it's completely changed to back what was it 30 years ago that we went there, like you know. So but small, tight ground. I, I don't know if the ground is actually the pitch is actually smaller than what uh other Premier League grounds are because it looked like we couldn't create as much space as we normally do. Uh the performance, well, wasn't great, but we got the win in the end. The atmosphere was just electric it was unbelievable like you know and i do you know it's one of those games I, I i went up there i was driving out i went through all the country lanes i got bleeding uh 
flashed by the old speeding camera. So I got three points before we started. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, like, you can't find no uh, parking. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't really want to be at this game. You know what I mean? It's really starting to I'll get depression vibes. And then when you get there and, and, and the atmosphere and everything like that, and then what happens at the end, I'll take the three points um, and, and the fine. And um, it was just it was just an incredible, incredible night. And I was I have I, I haven't hardly slept at this moment, so I am still buzzing about it. You know, I know that it's you know there's going to be loads of critical things about it, but from from being there as a fan, unbelievable experience. Yeah, must have been James. Obviously, I watched a I watched a match with you, Jordan, <laughs> Jess. I, t- I tend to lean towards Jess, but because I haven't spoken to Jordan for a little while, Jordan, let's go to you, man. Let's get your thoughts on it. No, 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 ladies first. I'm happy for Jess to go first. Oh! Friends, friends, oh, friends. It's not like you're not sitting back there watching the highlights now trying to gather some notes. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should go first to give you some more time. Give you some well, more time. Case, I'll, I'll go first then. I'll go first then. I'll go first. Um, I'll go positive first. I'll go positive first. Um, what? Nah, nah, nah. This is, this no, is no, not no. like you, Jordan. This is not there's, like There's not you. many. There's not many. That's why I'm going positive first. Trust me. Um... They got the win. They found they found a way to get the win. So here, where I am, it's uh, the game was at four thirty in the morning. So we'd been out until about three o'clock in the morning partying. Got back, I thought, sod it, I'll stay up and watch watch the game. <clears throat> I missed the Havertz goal. I fell asleep for about ten minutes during the game. I passed out and I missed the Havertz goal. But I saw the other 80, 80, 80 odd minutes of the match. We won the game, <clears throat> and I think it's really important to win the game because my frustration in dropping points to Luton when it was three three and even three two down was that Manchester City at the moment don't look quite right. And you've made the point, Turkish, before that it's very, very hard to chase down Manchester City and overtake them. So where City are not at their best at the moment, I think it's really important to try and keep that buffer ahead of them for as, much, for as long as possible. And to drop points to Luton at a time when City aren't quite right, <clears throat> I was fuming. I was fuming. I thought it was unacceptable. Even a draw, I, I thought would have been unacceptable. But they got they got the win. Declan Rice was Declan Rice as, as he has been. Um, I'm loving how, <clears throat> a bit like Odegaard, he just loves to get the ball from everywhere. He's getting the ball from Zinchenko on the left. He's getting the ball from Ben White on the right. He's helping Saka mm-hmm. on the right. He's getting supporting Havertz. He just needs to be everywhere and doing everything. Apart from Declan Rice, the only player who I thought was effective throughout the whole game was was Odegaard. I thought one of his better performances in, in recent games, I thought it was back to his, his nimble uh, one-two, let's actually get the ball moving quicker type Odegaard we've seen um, in, in early parts of the season, even last season. I thought he was really, really good. <clears throat> and they got the three points. And, and that, for me, is the only positives I take away from, from this game because let's have it right. That Luton team, half of them, they look League One. They don't even look champ. They look League One. And for them to score three goals past us, it's unacceptable. It's not acceptable. I know we're, in the, we're still in the kind of fraud rate of celebrating the 4-3, 97th minute winner. Great. Let's enjoy that. Take the three points and run. But how are Luton scoring three goals past us? Three goals. That, that is right. not good enough. Well, yeah. there is that. But, the, but we wasn't great as a team collectively, James, in my opinion. We well, wasn't great. I, I was that's, thinking that's, that's about... It's not acceptable. So I started full time yesterday and um, I covered the negatives as well as the positives in the first five minutes. And, you know, you get the usual stop moaning, stop moaning. But I do actually think upon reflection, that was a 3-4-1 win. There was enough of that in the performance for me. Like, so firstly, credit to Luton, who I thought stuck it on us. I thought they pressed. This wasn't just some low block part of the bus job. I actually think they tried to stifle us, stop us playing our football. And yet, despite that, I thought we conjured enough to... Uh, we scored four goals. I thought we were worthy of four goals, quite frankly. I actually felt... I, I felt our build-up, we struggled. Like, getting to the final third, I, I, I could see us struggling to go through the motions. But I felt once we got to the penalty area, I kind of thought we were looking good with every attack. I kind of felt every time we did get in and around the penalty area, there was enough fluidity, there was enough movement, there was enough creativity and invention from the team I think we were well worthy of of our four goals and it's interesting because you say it's unacceptable to concede three to Luton I agree but actually did the team perform in a way collectively that kind of (laughs) merited them conceding three goals no not for me I thought actually we were still fine David Raya just had an absolute disaster and I've been 
and you know, you guys have been on these podcasts with me. I've not said much about Raya and his errors. I've said that wasn't good enough at Newcastle. Uh, City got away with it. Chelsea, yeah, probably could do better. Um, and there's other moments that Lon's got. But I've largely just said, look, I don't see a lot between him and Ramsdale. Is what it is. Hopefully he irons them out. But it, it's entering that unacceptable stage for me now. You know, it's, it's entering that point of, you know, come on. You know, we have spent 30 minutes on this goalkeeper. He has shown a level of performance last season that we know he can get to. I expect you, when you come out to claim a ball, you're able to punch it. You're able, you, you know, defender's got to use his head. You get the advantage of using your whole arms. Punch that ball clear. And then, sorry, before Jordan comes in, unacceptable to let the ball roll through his legs. And I thought Ben White knocked through his legs under his body. And I thought Ben White was shocking on that third goal as well, Awful. by the way. Awful. Absolutely horrific. And, Awful. and the reason I call it outright is because I don't have a problem with players making mistakes. They they happen. When they happen so often, okay, then you've got to talk about David mm-hmm. Raya. Ben mm-hmm. White, that wasn't a mistake. He he he's if you look at the very beginning of that move, he's sort of pressing around the halfway line half-heartedly, doesn't really get to him. Then they kind of play away from him. Then he's kind of in no man's land lingering. Then they make his way through and he's sort of, again, not really there. Then he gets back into a shape. Then it comes back out to Barkley. And then he shows no intensity to get to the ball. And then Barkley, sort of a half a shimmy step over, whatever it is, gets the shot off. It was lazy. I'm going to call it. You called, um, uh, Lee, you called Eddie, Eddie Inketia's uh, appearance against Wolves the other day, kind of not showing the intensity or whatever. Maybe, but this for me was the epitome of lazy. Now, I'm not saying it was the whole game. I thought he had some nice moments, decent mm. in possession, whatever. And maybe overall as a performance, he did okay, Ben White. First time back in after some bad form. But I thought he was shocking on that goal. I don't mind saying it because we give him all the love and praise in the world when he's been brilliant. Um, but, but yeah, a- apart from those moments, I thought Arsenal actually probably largely did okay. Just before, sorry, Jess, Jess comes in to give her views. Just going back to David Rea, <clears throat> I've been saying for a couple of months now that my concern with the way that Arteta has handled the situation, the goalkeeper situation, is that he may end up losing both his goalkeepers mentally. Do you think that performance was because he's just not as good as maybe Arteta thought he is or was? Or do you think it's the result of a keeper who's under pressure and now feels like he has to be amazing because the fans favorite and the guy that was good ramsdale has been taken out so, which of the two do you think it is well i'm not having that yeah even even uh, i'm not he had the full uh, how can he be under pressure from from the manager the manager plays him every single time a, a mistake after mistake and he plays him he's had more mistakes than anybody uh, Jordan, I'm sorry, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, you, so, so you think those goals are more about ability? He just wasn't good enough. If, if Ramsdale's making those mistakes, I can mm-hmm. understand it because he's the one under the pressure. He's under the pump. You know what I mean? He's done nothing, this player, to get to justify being for, for a player to be kicked out of the team. I'm sorry, like, you know what I mean? Like, you've got to come in and perform. He's, had, he's made more mistakes than than Ramsdale's made in, in, in a year. In Yeah, I agree with that. Two months. I agree with that. I'm sorry, like, you know, he's got the backing of the manager, right? I see him yesterday because he got in here early, like, the coziness between him and the coach. You know what I mean? Like, I see Ramsdale being um, basically a, a, a ball boy yesterday, like, right? <laughs> turning into a ball boy. That's what he does. He's a ball boy now, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, actually, I thought Raya and the coach were holding hands when they come out. I'm not sure. I have to have a look back, like, you know, I can't. Like, <laughs> I cannot. He said no, Jordan. Ball boy, that's what he is now. <laughs> Jordan, I think both can be true. So I, I, I think, I don't think it's an ability thing. He's better than that. We've seen over two, three years in the Premier League with Brentford. He's definitely he's hundred percent a better goalkeeper than that. Um, so I don't think it's an ability issue. But I also equally think it's unacceptable if it is the pressure getting to him, because yeah. it's like Lee said, in a <laughs> slightly different way, he's quite clearly the favoured goalkeeper. You've got the benefit of making all these errors and you're still playing. Sob the pressure. You're the guy. Like, and and not that he hasn't deserved it. Has David, have David Ryan's performances over the last three years merited him being the number one at Arsenal? Probably been good enough, sure. No, I think he has been. But I don't think Ramsdale's deserved being dropped. So David Ryan's got to consider himself pretty lucky in a pretty fortunate position. Um 
that he's earned in some ways, but he's also been fortunate in others. So I don't really, I'm not giving any more excuses. And for anyone who's going, oh, here we go, reactionary, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 this is error six, seven, eight. It's, take, it's taken for this amount for me to get to this point. Um, I said drop, I said, said drop him for the next game because I want it to be a fair fight. If he starts Ryan in the next game. If it is fair, then, that's, that's what Ryan. happens. We know that, that's right? That's what happens. Yeah. If it's fair, that's what happens. Otherwise, look, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to have a going to have a word with Aaron when I see him. Cut out the eggs and bacon, <laughs> son, and get on the paella because that's what it's all about now, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Cut out the eggs and bacon, son. <laughs> get on to the paella. <laughs> No, that's the funniest thing you've ever said. Because he's not right. He's not right. You know, they're, they're eating Spanish omelets and things like that. Them too, like, you know what I mean? He's going to have to That get took on me a like, while. I was like, is there some kind of goalkeeping? No, that's hilarious. Diet. Um, Can we hear I, from Jess now, please? Let Jess have Yeah. Oh, oh, well done, John. Uh, I was thinking, but I would look at, listen, I want to hear what all what you guys had to say. Um, I feel like, listen, Luton haven't been getting smashed by anybody. No. So I never really thought this game was going to be as easy as people were making out to seem. Like I saw people putting out lineups that were like heavily rotated. And I was like, listen, we need to put out basically our strongest 11. And they kicked us to death. I get that that's like, that's always the, the tactic is if you can't play with the team, just kick them. But I do think we got kicked a lot. Like, you know, and so... It wasn't it's okay, game. Jess, because the ref pulled out his yellow card when Arteta, you know, obviously was really happy we scored in the 97th minute. So <sighs> don't even know, get me started thing. on that. They were like, you are going to miss either Villa or Anfield. They they wanted it so badly. It was so embarrassing. Um, how do you get a yellow just for stepping on the pitch like minorly? He didn't run onto the pitch. It was like one toe on the pitch, yellow. Because they, they're they fucking dis- idiots. That's they disgust why. me. I'm sorry. Like, but um, they kicked us to death. Um, but I think we did a good job, like handling the physical part. I know that we, you know, some of our players are not as physical as others, but I do think we were up for it for the most part. Um, I thought our attack was actually okay. Um, I don't think, like, as a team, going back to like what James was saying, like, I don't think we were bad as a team. I think we had one player actively playing against us in Raya. You know, I think you have to look at his performance and just be like, what what happened before you got here that led you to this? Like, this makes absolutely no sense. And it is unacceptable because, you know, I've, I've backed Raya. You know, I'm not, I, I'm kind of like on the other side of the fence where at the end of last season, I didn't really feel that confident in Ramsdale. I'll be really honest with you. Um, I don't like how the situation has been handled because it's like, okay, if you're going to bench Ramsdale, you need to move him on because all of this is just a circus now. It's a circus. That's all everybody wants to talk about. I think it's just, it's too big of a situation for a team that needs to focus on winning and not focus on nonsense, you know? So the way that it was handled is not great. And even though I don't think Ramsdale covered himself in glory at the um, end of last season and also at the beginning of this one, Raya is making mistakes at a clip at this stage where it's like, or is it just the fact that you can't step up to being at a big club? Is it that, you know, cause he's not a bad goalkeeper, but the amount of mistakes that he's making, I'm scared to go to Villa park. Now I'm scared to go to Anfield because they're just going to be putting in crosses. You know, it, it wasn't good. It really wasn't, but I don't think that his performance means that the entire team was under par because we could have won that game three to one, you know, not playing at our best. If he wasn't chucking it into the back of his net, it was nonsense. Like I just, even like the third one, first of all, how do you allow Ross Barkley to put in a man of the match performance against you? How does that happen? I like that actually was like, really, you know? And then the, the goal that he scores, I could have saved that. All you had to do was stand there. You could have trapped it. It was an awful shot. It went straight to him, and he just dove on top of it. Like, it's – listen, and it's – we've gotten kind of beyond the Kai conversation, which also I think it's kind of shady that nobody mentioned that he was really good. I, I, was, coming yes, coming I, I was coming there. I was coming there. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make there. sure. I was like, okay, a little shady here. But <laughs> now that we've kind of gotten beyond the Kai conversation a little bit, I know they're going to like hammer down on this Raya Ramsdale. And it's annoying because 
it's just a distraction that we didn't really need. If you were going to um, replace Ramsdale, you had to get rid of him in the summer. This is just, this is a circus and it's annoying. It really is like, I don't want to talk about this every week. That's what I'm no. saying. I'm, ti- I'm tired of it. That's yeah. what I said full time yesterday. I'm, I'm tired of it, but Ray's mis- mistakes mean we must talk about it because I, I don't want to. I'd rather he has fucking perfect performances and we don't talk about this, even though I liked Ramsdale, but because no. of these mistakes and the way these mistakes happen, it's like you you must talk about it. Because even if we didn't have Ramsdale and he was making these mistakes, we'd be talking about, does he need to be dropped? Does yeah. Carl Hein need to come in and be given a chance? It's the yeah. fact we've got Ramsdale. But we, we would. These mistakes are... They're, they're quite glaring, if I'm honest. But Jordan Lee, I think one of you had your hand up, if I'm not mistaken. I, I do. Just just briefly on the right ra- ra- thing, finally, for me. I was listening to the radio after the game last night, and they were talking about the fact they didn't... The, the hosts were talking about the fact that Raya... They don't think you can win a Premier League... Arsenal win, win a Premier League title with Raya in goal. They don't think he's of the level. He's making a lot of mistakes right now. I personally think we've got an issue in both boxes. I've got an issue with Jesus up top, but another day we'll do that one. Do you guys think that if we're trying to take the title from City and the margins are really fine, do you guys think that David Raya is of the level to be a Premier League winning goalkeeper when it really matters in March and April? Because you know me, everything that I critique and I look at and analyse now is with the prism of in the last four months of the season when it really matters. It doesn't matter now, but it matters then. Do you guys think David Raya is of the level in those tight games to be the difference that we can get over the line and win the title? I, I think I think yes. I, I put I my think... hand up, but I've got respect. Like, can I just say that? And he just jumps in that, James. Where was your hand? He, he did put his hand up to be fair. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see it. Go on, go on, go on, go on Lee. Go on. Go on. No, for all podcast listeners who's not who aren't watching, Lee had his hand up. <laughs> go on, Lee. Now I'll, I'm going to say this right about the Ray. I had accepted that Ray was the number one, right? Yeah, I've accepted it. Like after what you know, Ramsdale comes in against Brentford. After that, Raya's back in. He's a number one, like, yeah. And I will say this in, in his defense when you say about premiership goalkeepers, I see uh, Edison, your 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 favorite center half and midfield player, cocking up midfield against uh, uh, midfield, cocking up against Spurs. I've seen Allison do it at, at, at Liverpool. Goalkeepers make mistakes. Let's get that. No, 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 sorry, no, no, sorry, Lee. So, how, so name me another error Allison's made. I hold, I hold, I'm coming to that. Well, you like if you, you know what I mean. Oh, you're, you're, he right. made a load last season. To be, he so, was brilliant right. last year, but he made a load as well. But they make mistakes, right? You know. But I am now saying that there's too many mistakes from Raya. There's too many mistakes at this moment in time. He's got away with everything about the Newcastle game, right? And I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I'm going to be really honest with you. I think Arteta's rant was to protect him from that. I, I, I'm going to say that now because I've looked back and it, you know, it was a. A bit unnecessary, if I'll be honest. Like, but listen, all that ran and that, nothing was taken away from the poor cross that he made for that game. So he cost us in that game. Uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling now that for, for me, I, I agree with Jess. If you was going to leave one out, you should should get rid of one. Like, you know what I mean? It's not fair. I, I actually, st- 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 and I wasn't the only one saying it yesterday. There was lots of people around me going, it's not fair. Oh, the way Ramsdale's been treated after the season that he had to, to be just being being a ball boy yesterday, like you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Like you don't see that on the TV and all that. He's putting a few crosses and all that, like, and then then they they put a shooting practice in and he's in goal. Like I don't I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's right. And what 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 you have to do is justify that decision. Now what happened to Leno, but the reason that no one goes on about it is because um Ramsdale came in and he performed. It's the same with when uh, it was Lukic and David Seaman. Uh, you, Lukic was in a better position than than uh, Ramsdale, by the way, because he was a, a winner, a championship winner when they done it. You know what I mean? Like they done it the following season, but he had won the league with Arsenal. So when you go around and say, "Oh, is he a goalkeeper winning the league?" Arsenal have dumped a, a, a championship winning goalkeeper for another goalkeeper. The reason that it's nowhere near as much hype as it is now is because when David Seaman came in, he performed, and there was no argument. I am not saying that Ray is a better goalkeeper or a worse goalkeeper. What I'm saying at the moment on performances of what I have seen, you know. There's no justification why he's in the team and, and, and the other goalkeepers are. And it's got nothing to do with anything else and just what I'm seeing. The the one thing I will say, though, that like I feel like 
maybe adds a little bit of context to this, like, oh, well, it wasn't fair on Ramsdale. Like, he didn't do anything to be dropped. How were we meant to improve upon the team? Like, nobody really last season played bad enough where I think any of us felt like they needed to be moved on or improved upon, like, because we were so close to winning the title. You know, it's it was fine margins. So I think – I just wonder if the energy would be the same if this was, like, Gabriel Jesus. You know, if we had bought a striker, would people have felt like it was harsh? Because he didn't really do much to be – he wouldn't have been – you know, he wouldn't have done enough to be dropped. Nobody really just, did. I, just, I, I didn't nobody. personally think that Ramsdale needed to be replaced this season. But I, I don't have an issue with Arteta thinking, I need to and want to bring in a goalkeeper this season. As long yeah. as that goalkeeper then is an upgrade and performs. 100%. Like, well, I, 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 this, I'm, I'm... Ramsdale's not my friend. He's not my friend. So there's no emotion here. I don't have any connection with Ramsdale. I don't care how he feels if the guy coming in is better. But the guy but, coming in, I know, but I, I agree. I, I agree with that. I just feel like this idea that Ramsdale didn't deserve to be upgraded upon or whatever, like we didn't even need to look at that position, I think is disingenuous when it's like we actually could look at every single position and try to figure out where the yeah, percentages yeah, is. Yeah, but yeah, if they got yeah. it wrong, then they got it wrong. I know people were upset that it's like, why are we buying a DM? We have Thomas Partey. It's because it's fine margins, you guys. Like it's just like it's a percentage. That's the difference. And so they may have gotten it wrong. You know, they may have gotten it wrong with Raya. Like, I'm very uh, – I, I just don't understand why he can't go through, like, four or five games without a mistake. I can I accept a mistake here or there, but, like, the mm -hmm. frequency to me is too much. I don't even think, though, that it's a case of, like, they've just, like, they've got it wrong with the signing or whatever. I, I think Arteta is getting it wrong in the way he is choosing to manage the goalkeeping situation. Now there's two schools of thought, which is – Basically, you've got to play him out his bad form to he sort of, you know, finds that comfort and gets more minutes. That's the only way to improve. I'm a believer of they're two very good goalkeepers. Give them a fair shout. If any other player was making these amount of mistakes, Zinchenko didn't start on the weekend. Do we think that was just to get Kivior's height in the team and all that? That might be a part of it, but we look no better on set pieces for it. You know, he then comes on the pitch, Zinni, and actually adds a little something. But... Part of me thinks Arteta's not particularly happy with the way, you know, the, the mistake he made that cost the goal and whatever. He might have said in the press, oh, that's what he does, Zinchenko. But he's come out of the team because he's made back, you know, he made back to back errors in Premier League games that very, very nearly cost, well, one cost us a goal and against Brentford nearly did. Just treat the goalkeeper situation the same. And I know it's a different position. And I know that you need comfort and, you know, with the back four and you need regular minutes or whatever. But I'm not saying this after one or two errors. I'm saying after about six, seven, eight. So just make it a fair fight. That's all I'm asking for. Make it a fair fight because Aaron Ramsdale, you're right. He showed some shaky moments at the end of last season. He also saved us a lot of points at Newcastle, at Villa, at Tottenham, at Liverpool. Um, I've not seen Raya save us points yet. And he's had 10 games to do it. Uh, I, th I think... Maybe you can't call it save points, but the save against Burnley at nil nil that was that was a that was a top top save because it was looked like he was going in. Um, they had the fast break bottom low shot bottom corner. True, true, true. So, so he has made saves. I mean, the Brennan Johnson he's made good saves. He's had good moments. I, I thought his distribution yesterday. I thought he was finding Kai Havertz on quite a few occasions. I was quite happy with that. Like, you know, he, he's got so, no one is no one even Lee even Mister Lee Ramsdale in the corner can't even bring himself to say that. Ryer is definitely a worse goalkeeper than Ramsdale. We don't know that. All we're asking for is fairness. Evaluate their performance fairly and make a decision based on that. Don't have complete and utter blind faith. You know, or it's not blind faith. It's not. There's 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 tangible evidence and data. And we can see with our eyes when you look at the last years why Ryer's getting the nod. But just make it fair. That's all I'm asking for. Nah, and, we'll, and we'll probably, well, not probably, we will find out how fair this fight is. is. Um, come Saturday 5.30 off, come Saturday 4.30 when the lineups announced. Um, I do want to keep it moving because it, it was a it was a big win in the end. It was three points. Um and I think it was it was well worth talking about the the, the negatives or the concerns or the problems because conceding three to Luton is not acceptable, like Jordan said, but I do put you know that down to Raya more than anything. Without him, it's a full one game. Um but let's keep it moving because there's a couple players, I say couple, there's a few that we can talk more about. One, obviously, is the match winner, Declan Rice. Two, Jesus. Some three, someone we probably haven't talked about in this light so far this season, or maybe not enough so far this season. 
But another another big game, his biggest game so far, in my opinion, from Kai Havertz. <laughs> Look, Lee's getting the, the, the chant started. Go on, give us the chant, Lee. Go on. Listen, uh... <laughs> I, 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 listen, I don't know if it's a great. I, no, I just okay. think it's an easy one to sing, like right, you know. And it's, it's an awful song. song. It's a great song. It's a great song because he is score. I actually never sang it until he starts scoring again, and he does. But listen, forget about his goal yesterday. I thought he was brilliant from from start mm-hmm. to finish yesterday. I, I, I think that it was a physical game. I know we said about Luton. I, I think we've given him a little bit of disrespect. I was well impressed with him yesterday. They know what they had to do. They knew that they could get away with a few tackles. They flew into our two uh, wide players at every opportunity. They they were very, very physical in uh, in the midfield. And Kai Havertz didn't shy away from that once. He made tackles. He got through. Mm-hmm. He got on the ball. He drove forward. He's a man with a little bit more confidence now, like, you know, and um, probably should have scored uh, about five minutes before Rice did. Um, when he had that header, which was tipped over the bar, should have done a little bit better from that. He's getting in the box, he's getting in late. And I, I thought that that was as good as midfield performance as I've seen from him uh, and, and needed. And um, I, I, I listen, I, I do think he had been lacking a little bit of confidence, but now his confidence, that goal against Brentford certainly a turning point. He's got the confidence now. He's got the fans, you know, uh, are... are, are are with him there. I actually watched him yesterday when they're singing his song. He's not quite too sure if what's going on at this moment. He seems very, very shy about things and all that, like, you know, but uh, doesn't really, he's on the periphery of the celebrations because I don't think he's quite got in into this. But when you look at Declan Rice to him, Declan Rice has just fitted in straight away like a glove. He, he, he's sh- maybe finding it a little bit difficult for whatever reason, but that was his best performance yesterday from start to finish. I thought in the first half, by the way, um, we was totally in command of that game. You know what I mean? We was 2-1 up. They'd won the, the header from for a free header, which you can't blame Ray for. It's poor defending. Other than that, they didn't create nothing. Um, and uh, Kai Havertz was very, very, very important in that first half performance. And then he carried it on in the second when we needed a different sort of a performance. He was there and, and he took his goal well as well. I think he stepped up in the second. I think. So. Yeah, I think he did. He had to and he, and he did. End of the first half, James was saying good performance, and I was arguing, saying, you know, he 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 has been good, but we tend to overstate it. When he is good, we act like he's been great. Second half, I really think he kicked on. Not to say he was he was great, but we saw a lot more from Kai in that game than we've done maybe across all the other games combined. Because he's got the goal, you know, he's got goals before. We've seen that coming off the bench against Brentford, for example, the game after that. But there was moments in the transition where he'd pick up the ball. He might drop a shoulder. He might, you know, pick up a one-two and, and work into space with the ball at his feet. I was yet to see that so far this season. And that's more of what I want to see, both timing into the box, which he's getting, you know, better at and more efficient at over the last few weeks, and him on the ball, assisting our transition, not just passing between the lanes, but running between, between the lines as well. So mm-hmm. for me, and, and listen, I also want to, it's, just, it's, a, it's an apology. Maybe I was harsh on Kai after the goal. Um, the, the, there's a video circulating of me flipping, saying, get back to... Listen, I've got PTSD. I remember Lacazette celebrating at, at Crystal Palace, 2-2 oh. Giroud. Giroud celebrating 3-3 free, free Bournemouth. That was the worst. The Giroud back heel, the, the Scorpion celebration. I've seen, I've, seen me all. Off. I've seen it all. So, Kai, I apologise because you actually did get the ball and, and you were moving towards it. There was a moment in your head, I think, mm-hmm. you wanted to do all of this, but you realised that so yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I was a bit, but you soft mugs out there, that wasn't abuse. I was just fucking frustrated that we was fucking pre two down to Luton. But yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Big up, big up oh, Kai. Big up Kai. Yeah. He was oh. really good. He was very good on the day. And that's the thing, it's like yeah, when you see was. a good performance, you know it. You don't have to well, you have to rewatch and look at this and the and the duels. No, he was really, really good. And um he adds a little bit of something different, I think, you know, when you move Xhaka on and you bring in somebody like Kai, you're like, okay, how can you upgrade on that position? It's hard, but I love that he can progress the ball and carry it. That's something Xhaka could not do. Um, so it gives you something a little bit different there. Cause we don't really have a lot of players that can do that, but loved his performance. Um, love the mentality. You know, what else can you really say? You know, he's gaining some confidence and we need that. These, the 65 million cannot go down the drain. So I'm happy. Yeah. You know what? You know what I've, I liked about him yesterday, and I've liked that moments. But so until yesterday, it was moments that weren't really effective. 
When older guard gets the ball, sometimes I feel like he holds on to it for too long. And me and James have discussed this. When Havertz gets it, he releases it quite quick. And sometimes it's too quick for me. But it's it's refreshing to have the other side because sometimes the ball needs to be moved quick. And then older guard yeah. can be frustrating in that sense. Whereas Havertz gets it and he's looking. And at times I was thinking he's trying to hide, get rid of the ball and he doesn't want to be on it. But yesterday he was doing it the right times, the right sequences, the right... Yeah you know, in, into the right spaces and it just aided the attack so much. James, sorry. Yeah, well, when we signed him and then people were trying to understand the signing and then you go, and we've had this conversation this podcast, and then you go to what haven't been his great performances, a lot of people have turned to things like his movement. And that's a difficult thing for people to evaluate and judge on a, I don't know, on a show or whatever, unless you're quite literally sitting there and watching the game next to each other and you're pointing out in real time. It's very difficult to sit there and go, yeah, you're right, he's struggling, but boy, his movement's great. <laughs> you're right, you want to see the on-the-ball stuff and you know the dual winning, the all that. All the really kind of, the, st the stuff that Stats picks up really well is kind of what we wanted to see. But the one thing I'll say is I thought this is also a bit of a win and the last few weeks have been a win for those who have really said, this guy has elite movement. Elite might be strong. But let's roll back the goals for a sec. That run to the back post for Saka's cross against Brentford, it's a really great run. He's in front of the defender and he wraps himself around to get that head onto the back post. Lons as well, what does he do? He reads that Jesus is going to win the header, but he does the exact same thing. We've got to talk about Jesus in a sec. But yeah. he, like, as great as the pass was from Jesus, and we've broken down on Tactical Insight, which is, I'm going to keep saying it, Lee's favourite show. Um, he doesn't understand it, but that's fine. Um, but it's his favourite show. And, like, but when um, when Saka lumps the ball forward to... Uh, did he... Jordan, did Jordan just do it? Jordan's got it, mate. Look, oh, hey, come on. Come on. Around, come nah. on. James and Lee, you man are slacking. I can't lie, man. One of you man needs to Up step your game, up. bro. Up your game. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> I can't avoid that Lee's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pissed off. How how can Jordan film on his Jordan. Nokia 360 with the world's no worst Wi-Fi? You know, no no clear picture, and he's just there, bam, pulling it off. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. have, have some of that. Have some of that. While you're still stunned, James, I'm going to pick up from your point. Just on Kai Hatman. He movement was, was great, brilliant. basically. For all three guys, uh, for the for the Martinelli one, front post run. So I just want to say, front post run. Yes, 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 use, yes, yes. And then yes. for the goal. So for all those who were preaching the Havertz movement's great, we've actually seen five, six good, like genuine evidence of that in the last um, three, four games, which is great. Yeah. We disagreed on the podcast we did after the Brentford game about how good he was in that match. I didn't think he was good in that Brentford match. He got the winner, but I didn't think he was very good. But the last, the was it the Seville game he scored? And uh, Lons. yesterday, Lon, sorry. And yesterday, he performed, actually, he contributed. He was really good. Lee mentioned it just a minute ago. There was two incidents, two incidents in the game in each half where he got the ball and he drove. Yeah. I've not seen that from Kai Havertz for three no. and a half years. I've seen good passing from him. I've seen good flick-ons from him. I've seen a big goal in a European Cup fight, but I've not seen him get the ball, turn and drive. And I think with the way I look at Kai Havertz is I'm not actually judging him by goals and assists. That might sound no. mad. I'm not. I'm Neither. judging Kai Havertz on his his um his transitional impact um to for, from midfield to the to the attack that's how i'm judging kai Havertz and getting the ball and just giving a ball turn i'm going to drive at them that for me is where i'm judging him and it was really good to see him do that because i've not seen that from him at all i'm judging kai Havertz on his intensity in that eight role i need intensity i need legs i need getting back and forward supporting the the the, the front three but getting back in midfield to protect the back four as well and he did that really wow i wasn't even trying to do it that time <laughs> I, I wasn't, even, shot, man. I, I wasn't even trying to do it that time it's a, it's a madness um so, yeah, so I think Jesse right. I think he deserves a, a lot of praise. I think there's been a lot of credit he's got in previous games where I don't think he was good. <laughs> I think he did the bare minimum and we kind of like overpraise it. I'm not that guy. I won't be doing that. But yesterday he was brilliant. Yesterday he was very, very good. So fair play to him. I, I, I want about five minutes if possible on Jesus too. Um, I'm weary to start oh, with Jordan God. here because Jordan, yeah, there you go. Oh, God. <sighs> 
look at Spain, though, man. You look at the Wolves goals Jay, without Jesus, they don't happen. You look at a couple goals yesterday without Jesus, they don't happen. I know you're probably going to lean towards maybe his goal scoring, which a lot of people do, and that's fair. But, I mean, the, the type of striker he is, regardless of what you think about needing the different type of striker, because I'm with you on that, the type of striker he is, how many is better at what he does? No one. Not, 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 not many, if anyone at all. And my, my ire towards him isn't even necessarily directed at him. It's not his fault. He's not the guy that I think would lead us to a Premier League title. I mean, I, I still got us winning the title, but I've got us winning the title in spite of him rather than because of him. And what I'm doing here is I'm being deliberately harsh because I'm just still concerned that in those key months in the run into the season where the games get highly pressured, and you don't get many chances, and you need your gunman to put one in two chances away, I'm concerned that he's not that guy. And I'm being harsh because we're not there yet. Let's judge him on what he's doing right now. Gabriel Jesus is a phenomenal football player. He's a brilliant football player. His link-up play, I think what he brings to the overall attack is, un is unmatched. I think what he's doing for the team as an attacking unit is, is unrivaled. I think it's very, 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 um, it's very important what he does for our attack. I just fear that we're going to be panning him in the in the latter months of the season because, as you say, so because he's not the guy, he's not a gunman, and I just think at some point this season we're going to need a gunman. But that's not his fault. You can't blame a dog for barking. That's what he is. What he is, right? That's that's what he is. So I, I'm being deliberately and unfairly harsh on him, but I just think a lot of the, the gas I hear about Jesus. Let's let's hear that gas in March and April. But uh, 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 well, we're not in March and April now. We're in. No, um, no, December. I accept that. I accept that. I accept and, that. And and if he doesn't play yesterday, we don't win that game. I agree. Oh no, go ahead. I don't. I thought I was... he was unreal. I thought he yeah. was very good. Sensational yesterday. I didn't realize that he was until I watched it on TV. The thing is, is though, like, I mean, I could understand if everybody that's won the Premier League in the last five, six seasons had a gunman, but they really haven't. You know, Liverpool won the league with Firmino scoring like nine goals. You know, that's Salah. Yeah, we have Saka. We share the goals just like they did. Salah. I'm not saying that we can't win a Premier League title with the method of sharing goals. I mean, that's yeah. not been proven previously, but I'm happy to kind of see if that works out. But all the teams that have won the it Premier League been. title have had a gunman who. No, City City did two years with a false nine. Yeah, Foden, De Bruyne, yeah. Bernardo all chipping in. It's 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 one hundred percent been proven. Like actually, the return of nines is more of the last year. Like and and Erling Haaland, who it, it always feels wrong to slander Erling Haaland because he's unbelievable. His records are a joke, um, but he's been missing chances recently. He's been missing big chances recently. I know he's been scoring as well, but like it could even happen to the very best, the very most elite goal scorers can miss chances. What I love about Jesus is if he misses a chance, I'm not kind of thinking that that is definitely how I'm going to judge his performance. I'm thinking, okay, he might miss a chance, but I, but he can still win us this game. He still has another way to do it. I thought that quick throw was genius. Yeah. I thought the... I thought the link up for the Wolves goal and everything, he's just like, because he's not six foot three, people don't want to call him a target man. He's a target man. Oh, he's unbelievable. He pins back yeah. centre backs. He is a nightmare. Yeah. That that pass into, into Havertz is sublime. Like, it's yeah. so good. Pin back the defender, back, 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 lean all the way back into the. He doesn't start in the penalty area, he works him all the way back, just wait for the right bounce, timing of the run. Into your feet. There you go. Prod that in the back of the net. I I don't know if there's many in world football that can do that. Do you, do you know what, James? Spot on there. And, and it, 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 you, he's up against players that are you know six foot four, powerful, and all that. Like he bounces off from me. Hold up. You know, there was one time there was a player pulling shorts down, and he still got away from him. Like you know, I think he, I, I think that. Listen, what did Harlan do against Tottenham? Like you know, he didn't score. What did he contribute? You no, know, he made a good pass towards the end, yeah. like you know, which probably should have been on. But other than that, he didn't do nothing. When Jesus doesn't score, he still contributes to our game. He contributes, uh, contributed against Wolves, as you said, with that pass and everything like. And I, I thought yesterday, you know, he had one chance, he buried it, 
Um, I, I thought his all-round general play was outstanding. And it's been no coincidence that Saka and Martinelli, since he's come back in the team, have looked dangerous. And the reason being, and you watched it yesterday, is you cannot double up on Saka and you cannot double up on Martinelli because if you do do that, you're leaving Jesus free. And that, so yesterday, they, they, there was a conscious thing to put uh, people on Jesus. Saka got a little bit more space. Saka then uses that space. Martinelli did. I, I'm at, oh, oh, you know, I thought he was outstanding. Yesterday. And actually, I didn't didn't really notice it because he's watching, you know, because you're involved in the game or whatever. But watching it back, the highlights yesterday, he was pivotal in everything we done from an attacking point of view. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was really, really good again. Um, I, for me, Jesus is not really as big of a problem as I think people make him out to seem. I think we're obsessed with the striker thing, but we score more than enough goals. And as long as we're creating the chances, it's fine. And a lot of that is around Jesus and his all around play. And he's so intelligent and him and Martinelli and Saka just work so well together. The one thing that stood out to me yesterday was the, you know, that were top of the table for individual errors leading to goals. I actually think that's more of an issue than goal scoring. You know, I think we focus on that a lot, but when you're at the top of the table for that, and that's the exact reason why we didn't win the league last season, <clears throat> that's more of a concern to me than whether or not Gabriel Jesus is a 25, 26, 30 goal a season striker. Cause he's, it's, it's not really about that. I, I think, for me personally, that is quite a damning stat. Though. I mean, we we've got the joint best defense in the league. I think with Liverpool, if I'm not mistaken, after those three goals conceded, they've conceded three themselves to Fulham. But we've also made the most errors leading to goals. I think Liverpool are just behind us with four. But imagine we could tighten that up. Imagine we could kind of just eliminate those errors, just even half them. If we half them, we probably we probably sit seven points clear at the top of the table. That's the fine margins we're working with. Um, but yeah, Jesus discussed. Anyone want to bring up anything else before we keep it just, moving? Well, on? it's just a last line on Jesus. I, I thought, um, you know, I don't think you can say much about Arteta as a manager in a game against Luton, where I think you know Declan Rice obviously dug us out and was brilliant. Um, but we probably, you know, like you said, the errors you can't blame the manager. I did, I did quite like the way Arteta was happy to go long ball yesterday. Like Jesus was often dropping into midfield with Havertz leading the line, um, and we did. That combination, you know, for the third wasn't an accident. At times, it was he you know, Havertz winning balls for Jesus in the other way, um, with Erdogan playing deeper. So nice to see that we can mix it up tactically as well, um, and uh, and give Jesus a bit of a strike partner as well. So, you know, Havertz played a couple of roles yesterday. It was, you know, like I I was quite frustrated because I felt there was a complacency at times that ran through the team in that game. Not from all. That's why I bigged up Saka, Rice. Havertz, Jesus, because they actually took the occasion seriously. Um, but I did feel there was an air of complacency at times from the team. Um, but, you know, amongst that, there are a lot of positives. And I actually think the fact that I know it's Luton away, I hear that. It's probably the opportunity to try <coughs> things differently tactically. Um, but it was just another way to get forward and we look quite good at it. I think it's really just my, my overall thinking is that it's, it's super dope that we're going into the, the Christmas period, five points clear at the top of the league. There's been so much uh, conversation around Arsenal not being at their best, you know, not attacking well. We're top of the league by five points. And that is with, you know, he who shan't be named having moved on from the club. Um, Kai Havertz having an awful start to his Arsenal career. Um, you know, key injuries to key players. Thomas Partey hasn't even played in this team this season yet. And I think he's our most important player, but that's a different discussion with another day. And I think we're five points clear. I, I, I still think if Thomas Partey in this team elevates this team significantly. That's but, like, yeah, importance has dwindled a bit because of the, 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 the importance of other players emerging around oh, him. So, uh, he's definitely yeah. not our most important player, but he's a difference maker. His importance has definitely went down a couple of percentages. Do you think? Uh, maybe, maybe, but I, I just, I just think having said all of that, five points clear at this stage is really impressive. I think we need to just take stock of that. We're going to go into a really difficult Christmas period now, where we know things can change in a month's time. We could be fifth. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But let's just re up now for this for this very difficult period and try and get into January the first, still top of the league, and then the season for me begins. 
well, get in there with no more injuries because this Tommy Asu news that's emerged following the game um, out a while, it seems. No real confirmation on what it is and and what's going to happen. And it's just another in a long line of, of unfortunate setbacks for him. And this one comes at a time where it really looked like he was finding his place in the side and his importance was being realised a, a hell of a lot more than it has been over the last 18 months. Well, what do, what do I'm not even going to ask, what do we do? I mean, it's a calf injury. He's had a problem with his calf for a while now. I just mentioned it's, it dates back to before Arsenal. Um, yeah. Well, what, 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 what do we do? I mean, Timber and Tomiyasu now are out I mean, long term. Do, 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 do we know? Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So, no, no, you go, you go, go ahead. I w- I'm just, I feel like the, the concern for me now is just like, it does feel like we're a defensive injury away from catastrophe. Mm-hmm. And when Arteta said that we were really thin at the back a couple of weeks ago, or even like maybe just a week ago, everybody was like, no, we're fine. But we're not. We're really not. Like, we really are thin at the back without Timber and Tamiyasu with this injury. We don't have the option anymore, really, to do this 60 minute. Zinchenko substitution or, you know, what are we going to do at Villa Park and Anfield? Like, what are we about to do? I thought, I want to get your guys' thoughts on this too. Like how, what about Kivior? You know, I've been wanting him to play, mm. but I don't think, I don't think he did any like enough, you know, to make us feel like we're good no, there. Yeah. He looked a mess. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really like him. I think he's quite a calm, cool-headed player. I, there's a lot I like about him. I thought he was erratic as hell. Yeah. And he looked weak. You know, like, I know that sounds really bad, but like, he just didn't look like he was up for the physical part. Like, we're, we really better hope that like our players stay fit because it's one, it's we really one injury away. And if we had to go into the January window and get anything, I know that it's not, it's not the sexiest thing to get, but go out there and get a freaking defender because we can't have a third season go down, go down the drain because we don't have a defender, you know? I'm yeah. I'm not so sure. I, I think we've got Timber was unlucky. Clearly, uh, Tommy Asu being out is is a re- reoccurring thing. If we were to get another defensive injury to our team, it depends where because you could rearrange. You could you know you've got Ben White that can play across the back four, bar left back. You've got I know he's not very good, but you've still got Suarez that can play two or three games at right back if we have to. And you're, I, I know it was like what Suarez, but I just I'm just saying we've already got two players out, so I don't know if you can have nine defenders in the event that you have five injuries. Do, do you know what I mean? You can't just sign twenty defenders in the event that you have yeah I, I agree of injuries. You. Maybe it's do you know like- what I mean? So. Maybe well, if you have to sign Tommy's replacement, you can do that because you, you there comes a time with any player, even if they're quality, that that you know I you agree. Have, you have to make a decision on. And I think it, I think in January yeah. we need to be signing Thomas Partey's long term replacement, ideally. And it's not Polinia. I do agree with Jester. I would take him, but he's not Partey's replacement. And we need to think about this Tommy Asu issue because I love Tommy, but this yeah, is like, this is like the fourth injury in a matter of what a couple of years. That, he's that been out like more a, than he's That feels played. like a summer thing yeah. to me. That that feels like a summer thing to me. I think in the summer, we need to sign a right back. I don't think that's urgent for January, personally. I think we've got in a pool of right backs that we can get to the end of the season and win a Premier League title. I think in the summer, you need to go again at that position. If Saliba gets injured, we're cooked, guys. I'm, I'm just going to say that right now. Yeah. You know what we'll do, though, Arteta, in my opinion, before we bring Cedric in, I think he moves Rice to centre back. Yeah, and that's, that's actually well. a smart thing to do. But then you look at our midfield, and then the, what we lose there becomes the next problem. Yeah. But, but I think he trusts Jorginho, El Neni, whoever to come in and yeah. keep things ticking more than Cedric. Probably, I, got, I like there is no trusting problem. Cedric. Like, let's be so freaking for real. Rule Walters, warm up, okay. Somebody else, yeah. some kid from the academy, warm up. Cedric cannot come back in on period. Well, I don't care what we got to do. Kai Havertz, left back. No. <laughs> uh-uh. no I will Cedric. say, though, this is, a, this is a question of the academy a little bit now because I know we've been like loving Saka Smith-Rowe and all that, but it's been a little while since we've had an academy prospect kind of break through Arteta's Bought young players, but also signed some experience. If there is a crisis there, 
if we are producing these good players and Raw Waters, we've now known about him for a good year and a half or so, I would, I'd like to think there's another issue at right back. You trust Waters to come in. You know, I, I, who, 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 was the, who, who was the last academy product that we brought through defensively? Uh, Bellerin. <laughs> wow. Wow. So Raw Waters is 18, right? He's not 16, 17 year old. By 18, you know, what, what, when's his birthday? He's, oh, happy birthday to him. His birthday's in 10 days. So he'll be 19 in 10 days. If you make it to make it 10 more days, Arsenal, <laughs> and then I enter the age of which I say it's unacceptable not giving him a chance. So, <laughs> but, but come on, right? He's, he, he physically looks up to it. He's not a small, he's not a small guy. If he is good enough, um, and of course he's got to be good enough. I'm not saying just chuck him in for the sake of it, but then if he's not good enough, you kind of got to ask why, because this is the best defender we're producing in the academy right now, I think, in terms of being at the age where he could nearly play. So, you know, I'm just asking the question. I haven't seen enough of him. People in the comments will tell me if he's ready or not, but I think he needs to be. Play I up. personally think I, I personally think midfield is a bigger issue than defence. I, I think the lack of cover in midfield is, is a bigger problem for me or bigger concern than defence. I think there's enough people that we can move around, do you know what I mean, defensively to be okay. I, I think in midfield, especially in the defensive areas, is where I, I'm more concerned. That'd be an area where I'd be trying to bring someone in January before anybody else. I think like uh, PSV now comes in important game. I know it sounds silly, but it comes in important game to give these youngsters a go. See if oh, yeah. we can be um, be ready for that game, like you know, because obviously Tam, Tommy Asu, you know, this is a, you know, he's becoming a Thomas Party, isn't he? Like you know, uh, I thought he's been brilliant, deserves his place in the team, but there's always that worry he's going to get injured. Carflings, you can't see him being out for too long with that, like probably about three, four weeks. Um, but it's it, it's a big kick there. But like, yeah, give this Waters, give give a couple of these kids a go in. Um, in this PSV game, see if they're up for it. See if they. We shouldn't they see a single game. first team player in that game. Yeah, like let's be so no. serious. Let's be so real. Anybody. Well, and and I will up. say, sorry, Jess. I will say about Saliba yesterday. I thought that was his worst game for Arsenal for a very, very long while. Didn't like the physical really? side of it. Yeah, he didn't win that. He didn't win his headers. Yes, sir. Part of being a centre half is winning your headers, and he he got he got. Got beat in the air far too often for my liking. Still very, very good on the ground and all that, but part of part of being a centre half is being dominant in the air. And I didn't think that we was in that in that game yesterday. Credit to Luton, you know what I mean for that. But I, I, did, I didn't think he was as comfortable as, as as normal. Certainly not in the air anyway. Just on Tommy Asu again. Sorry, isn't the Asian Cup coming up soon as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we 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 were probably losing for a cup for a few weeks with that anyway. Well, we're um, going to lose, lose him and Partey. It's nothing, not nothing we're not used to right now. We lose them. Yeah, yeah. yeah Partey as well, yeah. We'll just be losing them to international tournaments in January. But yeah, I mean, Tommy went from, and I still believe it, but I mean, last episode I said he's, he's been our best fullback this season. Now he's injured. So just our luck. Um, mm -hmm. just our luck mm. but we, we hope that it's a recovery free for weeks. Uh, I just want to say back, give you. He, he played well in the other game. I, it, we, I don't think you want to judge him on the game again. When I, I, I've just turned around and said, I didn't think like Saliba or Gabriel were at their best yesterday. It was a difficult game for defenders. I have to say that physical, you know, up in the end. You're not going to play against teams like that every week, week in, week out. I, I think he's done fine when he's coming. He has no, he has. I agree, but I, th I think I think I personally mentioned on the last podcast that I liked his his. Um, I think it was second half against Lons, like. Yeah, mm. I, there's a time to play there. I like him. He's also young. I mean, I think he's only 22, 23. Yeah, just, um, just, he was just he was just erratic against Luton. Yeah, it was a strange game. It was a difficult game for defenders yesterday because of you know, because I've been really honest. They're not used to that. They're not used to like long ball all the time. Like you know, what I mean, they're used to teams trying to go through the lines and things like that nowadays. That's the way it is. But they're old school. It's an old school grand, old school performance. Sometimes, yeah. But they we got through it. And I, I don't think I, I'm gonna, I'm not going to judge Kivier on that game. Yeah, we got through it indeed, but we face significantly more difficult opposition on Saturday. Um, away from home again, Aston Villa, familiar manager in place. Um, they've got a lot of plaudits this season about the way they're playing, the the fact they're up there in and around the conversation um, for top four, top five, depending on the Champions League places and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, are, are, are we confident going into that game off the back of conceding three to Luton? Yeah, different game. 
different guy. Yeah. I mean, I think that's an anomaly. Like the way that – not it's not an anomaly because Raya does it every week. But I, it's not – I don't think it's going to be the case that they're going to be breaking our lines and breaking us down and all that kind of stuff. We mm-hmm. really stifle teams from getting chances. It's And what I like about playing against Unai Emery is you, you know there's going to be a level of openness – that he's going to play with at home. Yeah. Really interested to see how they play against Man City because I think they'll give us a little bit of like a blueprint as they play them today, I think, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's going to be interesting. But, you know, they have dangerous players that, you know, they can hurt you. Arsenal need to be really up on it. They're playing in Europe. It feels like those games are catching up to them as well. If you watch them against Bournemouth, they weren't at their best. They drew that game away from home at Bournemouth. So, I think it's going to be a game where they're kind of tired. We might be a little bit tired. That might help us a little bit. But now that our cl- attack is clicking, I think we're fine. I do. I think we're fine as long as Raya doesn't chuck it in his net. I think we'll be okay. You know, I'm not saying that, like we're going to go out there and beat them 3-0. But I think it's going to be a good game. But I definitely think we have we have something for them. Really unfortunate Mikel won't be on the sidelines, though. I'm still real. I'm very upset by that. I have like, who do I need to write a letter to? That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, why is he not going to be on the sideline for that? Like, what? Like, it's ridiculous. PJ, um, must yeah, what have do you guys think? A million that, so. that they haven't read yet. Um, yeah. yeah. Aston Villa, no Arteta on the sideline. Um, Jordan, you was shaking your head when I asked, are you confident about it? I mean, has that been what, because what? of Luton or because it's Aston Villa? Hmm. Uh, more so it's Villa. Villa are a good team at home. Villa have goals, not just in their front line, in their midfield. They have goals, lots of goal threats throughout their team. Um, and we know Unai Emery will have them organised, but uh, as Jess says, we know that he will also play. And that's where I think we are at our best, when teams come to play. Um, no result would surprise me in this one. A, a draw, loss or win. I wouldn't be stunned if we lost this game. I wouldn't be stunned if we won this game. So it makes it very hard to predict. Um, mm. I, I love their midfield. I think I've said before that I think apart from maybe us, City, maybe Liverpool, they have the best midfield collection in the league. Um, there's two players I've got there who I love, Ramsey and Louise. I would love, I'd love either or both of those at Arsenal next season. So this, this is not going to be this is not going to be um, an, an easy game. Um, I need Jesus to. These are the games where I need Jesus to kind of win it for us. I need him to be, to be the difference. Away at Villa, it's going to be a tough game. These are the games we're looking to him to be the difference. Um, if, if I'm being honest, and, to, and for Raya to to not be a plum. <laughs> yeah, it, I liken it to St James's Park in that. Um, it with Newcastle, when we got through that first ten minutes, we got our foot on the ball and started playing. I thought we took control of the occasion. I, I could see us being 2-0 down after 15 minutes. I can also see us weathering that storm, getting our foot on the ball, playing. And, you know, suddenly you get chances because there's a weird thing about Emery. He's kind of seen as a manager who coaches a good press and a good structure. But like Jess is right, they're very open. They, they concede shots. They played well at Newcastle. They lost 5-1. They got slapped up 3-0 at Liverpool. They were in good form, I think, before that. They drew at Bournemouth, conceding two. They lost at Forest, conceding two. Tottenham, who had no team, should have scored five against them. And they should have. I know we're Arsenal fans, but let's be real. Tottenham should have won that game. I, I So there's something about Villa that's kind of strange. Jordan summed up in that line, you know, no result surprised me. A 3-0 win or a 3-0 defeat. Like, both... Teams are both very capable of either one of those happening. Um, this might be one of those games where we, hopefully at full time, are very grateful for this new controlled Arsenal. <clears throat> we didn't see as much of it against Luton, I'll be real. Um, but we might get to half time. They've only had three shots and it's 1-0 or 1-1 one, one or whatever. And we're going, you know what? Like, we're limiting them. And if we win this, it might be the fine margins, but it's because we played it on five margins. We got over the line. Um, so I'm really hopeful it's one of those. I hope Arsenal go back to what they've been doing most of this season. Uh, that, that I'm not saying lose the attacking fluidity we seem to have discovered in the last three games, uh, but I'm just saying you've got to respect Villa. And I think if we methodically play our way through the game, I think the chances will come. I, think, I, I also um, saw, 
Sorry. 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 Sorry.
Yeah, he was very good at Villa Park last year. But it's not really so much on that. It's but I know, I know, I know. I, know. Yeah. I wouldn't be disappointed if that happened. Yeah. I would. No, I'd prefer Trossard to come in if Havertz is going yeah. to be rotated, not not Georgie. Tr- Trossard Remember Chelsea away? Me. Like, I feel like they have runners, Villa, don't they? Their whole midfield is full of runners. Unless they're going to play Telemans, they won't against us. So the last thing I kind of want is Jorginho being run back past. Yeah, but... that's a good point. Don't, I mean, I want Havertz, but it just wouldn't surprise me if Arteta reverted yeah. to his base, get Rice in the eight, a little bit more protection, all that. Cool, we'll cool, cool. Next question. Let me see how to word this question. What would you do for the goalkeeping situation against um, Wol- um against Aston Villa? Would you offer the bring- hair a contract? Six months. <laughs> well, you can. We might discuss that in January at this rate, but we can't right now. So, who starts for you? Not for Mikel. Who starts for you against Aston Villa, Jordan? I, I think it's got to be Raya, only because if Raya's our number one, we need to integrate him as part of this team and get him up to scratch as soon as possible. I get the fairness argument. I get the democracy. I understand that, and I wouldn't be upset if it was Ramsdale. But if Raya is our number one, and I've committed to Raya. This chop change, chop change thing, I don't think helps the overall team. So I, I, it's harsh, but I'd probably stick with Raya. Lee, dare I ask? <clears throat> yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to surprise you here. Like, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, if if it was me, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Ramsdale. But I, I'm looking at it, the, the bigger picture and all that. Like Raya's the number one, um, so I, I'll play Raya in this game. If he has another poor game, yeah, does yeah. anything wrong? Then Ramsdale comes in against PSV and stays in. Mm-hmm. James, I pick Ramsdale. I think it sends a great message. What? Sorry, one. I was. I say one too many mistakes. Two too many mistakes. Actually, um, the team bailed you out. Fine. Yeah. I mean, mistakes happen. You forgive them, and and you got to work on it. He's good. We're, we're not dropping in for Villa. Doesn't mean he never plays a game for Arsenal ever again, and can never just you know discover his form. But yeah. I, I, I think. I think it's a nod to Ramsdale to say, look, he, I imagine he's working hard behind the scenes. Raya's not done it. Ramsdale was great for us last season. Did very well at Villa Park last year. That was your chance. Yeah, he made a great save at Villa out. Park, didn't he? he did. When it was 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. What was the score last season? 3-2? 3-2. 3-2. He oh, made an unbelievable four, save at 2-2. 4-2. It was 4-2. He made an unbelievable yeah. save at 2-2. Two, two. He yeah. did. Yeah, he did. He did. Jess, who right. you with if it was up to you on Saturday? You got to keep Raya in, I feel like. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Ryan Hill is going to come out with any sort of, like, good performance. Like, I think at this point, like, his head's gone, you know? So, mm. I don't know. I kind of agree. Like, you just have to kind of keep going with Raya, I think. I lean, I, I lean towards James. I, I would I would throw a dog a bone in this one, as they say, and then give Ramdell something, a, a bit of a lifeline. Um, that's not to say Raya's not number one. Raya can be number one, but, uh, you know, a bit of pressure, a bit of competition, he shouldn't shy away from it. Like Ramsdale shouldn't shy away from it. Um, but there has to be chance to compete. All right, let me bring the prediction table off. Let's do the predictions right now. Lee, you're top of the league, so you know what to do. Kick us off. Aston Villa away, 5.30 Saturday. Aston Villa one, Arsenal two. <laughs> Uh one, two, Jordan's enjoying. Um I'm gonna go for oh, this is a tough one, you know. Very tough. Oh, it's just raindrops. Oh, I didn't yeah, know you got new. We've got a new one. We've got a Dutch. Louise, look, he's doing research. What are you reading there? Yes, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> James is vexed. I've just seen one as well. Pissed, yeah. Come on, love for the love, people. Love for the love. This is how I've ended all my shows. Love, James. For the try love it. People. Try this one. There's another hand gesture I'd like to attempt, but I'll <laughs> how rude! How rude! Ah, right, one, two, um, two, one. Sorry, I was about to say one, two, two, one. Arsenal from Lee. Jordan trying to make some more, more oh, AI okay. um, emojis oh, up. Wow. I'm going to go for a 3 2 Arsenal win. No. What did Lee say? Sorry, I missed Lee. So, what did Lee say? Let me go 3 1. Let me go 3 1. 3 1. Sorry, 3 1. Um, James. 
So Lee said 2 1, Turkish said 3 1. Uh, like, uh, I, just feel, I just feel quite good about it, but. Hmm. Hmm. Damn. I'm talking between 2 1 and 2 2. I, I do think it'll be 2 1. I'll go with that. It, you know, if I get it right, I don't get to leapfrog Lee, but it's all right. All right, two one, another one. Um, Jordan, four one Arsenal. For one reason. Four one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Four one. What? I, I hope you're right. Hmm. I really hope we, you're right. We've been drinking in Bali, mate. <laughs> Where? You don't want to know. We'll, we'll talk offline. We'll talk off <laughs> you know what I mean, that prediction came out of nowhere. Um, go on, Jess. Round us off with the predictions, please. It's gonna be one of them games, guys. Three two Arsenal. Uh, you see Game of the season stuff. vibes. We like, just had that. We're gonna have one another. <laughs> Leave one. us alone. What do you mean? It's gonna be one of them. We just, we just came off the stuff. back of absolute carnage at Luton. Oh. There you go. There you go, people. We've all predicted Arsenal wins. I've gone for a three-one. Jess has gone for a three-two. Jordan's gone for a four-one. Lee and James have gone for two-one wins. Let us know your thoughts, predictions, lineups. Ramsdale, Raya. Are you tired? We're all tired. But listen, the conversation at this rate must go on with the mistakes that Ryan's made. Um, make sure you hit the like button, get to a thousand likes, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you go over and show Jesse's channel some, some, some love. Sorry, she knows Arsenal. I'll put it in the description. It's been there the last few shows. It'll be there again for this one. And let's slowly but surely move on to comments of the day. Everyone prepared for this one? Everyone ready? Yeah. Yep. I've had to change. Jesse, Jesse, you got your comment, Jesse. You got one. Nah, I'm, yeah. looking, I'm looking you a point for that, Jordan. I'm sorry, but it, me, it, yeah, yeah. What did I do? Oh, and I don't know that. I don't know how to explain it right now, but if they find anything, if they find anything, they used to. I'll, I'll find it. Right they find anything. Find <laughs> something. Disgrace. Disgrace. These two do anything for a point. I'm telling you, anything. Like, I? It's embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, comments of the day. We already well, aside from special guest Jess. Um, Jordan, let's let's save you for All last because right. I'm sure you've got a catalogue there of yeah, comments. It's, it's, you're, you're right, you're right. Let's go right. Let's go. All right. Go. I've got this from Jason Smith for he says, Wow, I don't know what James is talking about, but I think Erdegaard is actually a good player. Don't know if he hate don't know why he hates him so much, man. Lay off of him. Also, that part where he started slagging off Norway. Too far, James. Too far. <laughs> I was reading why it going... Do, why do you hate Odegaard? I know. I agree with this comment. You were going in on Odegaard badly. Yeah, why no, do you hate him so much? Stop this. So, it, uh, he, had him, he had me in the first... You know that meme? He had me in the no, first no. half. He had me... And then, and then, and then uh, I was thinking, I didn't slag off Norway, did I? And, uh, yeah. So, thank you. You had me. Uh, it's just comment of the day. because you, you had me. Good, good work, Jason. Big up Norway. Big up Norway. Always. Very right. cold. Very yeah. cold, but big it up. <laughs> Go on, Lee. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've changed mine. <laughs> Got to love, Lee. Turkish sets up with all these Arsenal framed legend shirts, and Lee's just sitting there behind a dartboard. The ultimate professional, right? You know, <laughs> I got that one as well. <laughs> I've got one from a few shows ago, which was the first show. Well, that's that... not good. It's got to be from this one. I've reappointed yeah. that, and that's it's your role. I've, I've got some. From, no, I've got some from this show. People, just right, that's okay me. then. That's so all we want to know. Get who got points, but I've got get one from off. previous show that I'd like to just bring out there. And uh, uh, James, I want you to listen carefully. Spoonie a few episodes ago, as Jess stood in for Jordan and she forgot comment of the day, I think Jordan should be docked points based on the rules. Hang on, because okay. Jess forgot a comment, I've got to lose a point. Scandalous. I'll tell you what, they, they, I'll tell you what, they, that, ju- it's Jordan, they're just, they're just, they're just mercenary. Well, they would have had the comment if you were here. Mercenary. But because I was here and I didn't do my homework, wow. it's actually a you, it's on you. It's your fault wow. that there's no comment. Oh, think think about it this way. People think about it. Him there, like, I've know. never had Jess, a comment. Jess, Jess is on their team. Jess is on their team. <laughs> oh, yeah, on their now, team. Think about it this way, guys. Think about it this well, way. It, it when... didn't help that you upset her in the first minute to the show. When Ben White, you know, defended appallingly on the third goal, were you not all thinking... You know how mad you were at Tommy Asu for not being available. This is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is I, not, it's not. Just Tommy Asu wasn't available. Night, that, you know. 
Ben White, it's embarrassing. I, I, he didn't give himself glory in that, but he did push him wide. He didn't let him come inside of him, like you know what I mean. He pushed it wide, uh, and and he, uh, you know, <laughs> the goalkeeper should save it, like you know. What I mean? no, that was crap. It was crap. No, that was poor, cool. but he should still. He's pushed him out wide, James. Look at Lee no, he, he actually sword. hasn't. He's done nothing. And I like Ben White. Done, <laughs> he's done nothing place. in that. He's actually done nothing to try and prevent him, really. I've got to be it was poor, but anyway. James, he's protecting Jordan. He's diverting the subject. He's deflecting. Don't let him do it to you. Let me, let, let me bring you. Let me rein it back in with this comment. Ramos, Ramos said, Lee noticed the Turkish and James' solidarity and extended his allegiance to Jordan. Smart move. Now, on that note, people... We've got something big coming up in December. I'm not going to tell you what that something is. You'll find that in the next week, two weeks or so. But we've got something big coming in December. Something forever Arsenal related. A bit of a competitive edge to the usual shows that we have. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Look out for it, huh? Has that been booked in, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 8 a.m. Christmas Day. He said yes to it. Oh, Whatever happens, we get a point deducted, Jordan. I don't worry about that. <laughs> it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Go on, Jordan. Get your catalogue out. Right. Mate. Right. So I've got, got a few. The comments were, were, were pretty good this week. It's not, not, not usually good, but I've got a few here. So I'm, I won't read the names out. I can't be bothered. But Jess is absolutely amazing. I feel she's the best standing guest there has been on the pod. Another one. Jessica Black, backed by popular demand. Uh, there's another one here. <laughs> Uh, he's not bitter, is he? Great, great, to, <laughs> so see Je- great, to, great to see Jess again. Jordan's time is up. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 hang on a minute, there's a few more here. Uh-huh. You, you can tell Jess doesn't only watch highlights. You couldn't count the times Zinchenko lost the ball like she did by just watching highlights. Great show, as always. Hang on, there's a couple more. I'm not finished, I'm not finished yet. Uh, I'm just talking about yourself, so there's a few more here. Uh, <laughs> Jess, Jess is a good addition to the podcast. Jess is magic. Unbelievable analysis. Next level. If Jess remains in the show, count me in. Uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Love Jess on the show, besides Lee Judges. No need for that. Oh, uh, uh, Jess needs a place on the prediction scoreboard, and so it goes on. So I found those Jess um, appreciation comments um, very interesting and very. He found very, my comments, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great comments, great comments, great comments. Yeah. We've rinsed them all. We've rinsed them all. I think those comments have led on to a farewell for now for Jess. It's been a pleasure for the last three shows, Jess. Um, yes. I'm sure it's not the last time we will see you on this show. I'm sure it's not the last time we'll see you on this channel. Um, yes, guys, thank you. you RIP to the Forever Arsenal podcast. It's been <laughs> fun. Yeah. It's been great. Do you think we'll lose viewers when I, when I depart? What if the numbers go down? Then what? We're going to have to have a conversation. Here? We're going to have to have a conversation. <laughs> all I will say, all I will quintet, say is... Quintet Arsenal. All I will say is behind the scenes... There, there's a Raya Ramsdale decision that I'm sure they're willing to make. <laughs> <laughs> One day Jordan's going to walk into the changing room and his name's not going to be on the list. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be like that room where you walk up to the door and it's locked. One of Jordan's relatives is going to do an interview. Oh, I, was no. told, I was never told why. <laughs> <laughs> and that Turkish, I never yeah. liked him. Absolute wanker. They treat him with disrespect at Jordan. And that Lee and James, that's for them. Absolute toss pods. Yeah. 50,000 comments later, I was never told. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Just about is to win the prediction table as well. We get sacked. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ah, this is uh, Jordan. Lovely to have you back, Jess. It's been lovely to have you on the last three shows. Your channel link. Big up, Jess. Well done, Jess. Go show Jess some love. Her channel's there. Regular content there. James has been on the channel. She does regular content, like I said. Um, Can I come on? This won't be the last time she's on there. And yeah, you know yeah. what? I missed it. I actually missed you interrupting me when I do the outro. I missed this it. So last, last bring one. it on. Jess, bring it on. Go on. No, no, Jess. Can I come on your channel one time, please? I mean, you can, I'm, I'm, but you have to actually watch the games and agree with me on everything. Those are the rules. All, all, you're, all, all you're doing is fueling the, the myth that I don't watch football games. One <laughs> game I missed 18 I months ago. One! You fuel that enough. You fuel that enough yourself, bro. I watch every game. Anyway, 
Um, yes, I, I will make sure that I watch the game before I come on. I would be honoured to come on your podcast and chop it up with you on your fantastic podcast. I love how you just invited yourself. I love that. I love that you just invited yourself on the team. Never asked to come on out, James, is he like? Yeah, <laughs> no, but we, no one wants to go on Lee Judge's TV, to be fair. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, that was a good one. On that note, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it there. Jordan, Lee, James, Jess, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully, you guys and girls out there have enjoyed. Hit the like button. Let's get to a thousand. Hour and a half, a bit of overtime there, but it made sense. We're five up on the Forever Arsenal podcast, and we're out, and we'll be back after the next game, before the game, after that, which is PSV. So make sure you're there. Make sure you subscribe, put the notification bell on, and love for the love people. We're at peace.